Okay, so we're in module four. This is the second session. This is what I want to take up today. First of all, I want to discuss, uh, continue the discussion on equivalence when a circuit contains sources. So last time we took up, we started this discussion last time. I know we took up equivalence when a circuit contains sources and you learned source transformation. You learned how to transform a voltage source into a current source and a current source into a voltage source. And you can only do that if your voltage source has a resistance connected in series with it, or if your current source has a resistance connected in parallel with it. Otherwise, you cannot do voltage source, current source uh, conversion. Okay, today I'm going to introduce another type of equivalence when your circuit contains sources. And this is uh, equivalence based on North, uh, equivalence based on Thevenin's theorem and equivalence based on Norton's theorem. Okay, Thevenin's theorem. Let's assume a circuit can be partitioned into two networks. So I have a, I have a let's say a big circuit. Let's assume I can partition that into two networks, network A, and network B. And the point of interconnection between A and B are the terminals X and Y. Sometimes we think of network B as the load of network A. So you might think of network A as okay, a network, uh, and then that network has a load, and network B will be the load of network A. According to Thevenin's theorem, under certain conditions, this network, network A, can be replaced by a voltage source, VTH, in series with a resistor, RTH. And that is called the Thevenin equivalent of network A. Okay. So again, no, network A can be replaced by a voltage source, VTH, in series with a resistor, RTH. Okay. There are conditions for using Thevenin's theorem. First of all, network A must be what we call a linear circuit. So this must be a linear circuit. Okay, um, in your future courses, you're going to be, um, it's going to be explained what exactly a linear circuit is. No, for the meantime, no, when we say you have a linear circuit, Let's say you have a linear circuit. Okay, so this is composed of uh, linear sources and linear passive elements. When a passive element is linear, that means the relationship between voltage and current is linear. It can either be a straight line, no, or it can be a linear uh, a linear relationship between the derivative of the voltage and the current, or a linear relationship between the derivative of the current and the, the voltage. No? Suffice it to say at this time no, that resistors. inductors, which you will study later, and capacitors, these are all linear elements. And then your the voltage sources that we've studied so far you know, are also linear sources. Your DC source and your sinusoidal AC source, those are also linear sources. And if your dependent source uh, if the constant of your dependent source is, uh, it, well, yeah, if your dependent source is a constant uh, gain, gain, that's also a linear source. Okay, I don't want to belabor that too much, you know. Um, let, let, um, but, but um, yeah, no. Right now, lahat ng mga circuits na pinag-aaralan na nakita na natin are linear circuits. Okay, so, okay, um. Network A must be a linear circuit, okay? 
And then the dependent sources in network A can only be controlled by voltages or currents within network A. If I have if I have a dependent source here, if I have a dependent source here, okay, let's say that's a dependent current source. Okay, let's say this is uh, K multiplied by V1. No? Let's say K multiplied by V1. That V1 no, must be somewhere here. No? That V1 must be somewhere here. It cannot be somewhere here. No? So all dependent sources within network A must be controlled by quantities inside network A. It cannot be controlled by quantities in network B and vice versa. So that's the second condition. No? That's the second condition for which Tevin and CRM can be applied. Are there any questions with regard to that? Any questions? Okay. Okay, so what did we say? No? Network A, so this is network A, can be represented by a voltage source in series with a resistance RTH, which we call the Thevenin resistance. This voltage source is actually the open circuit voltage from terminal X to terminal Y with network B removed. In other words, if I, if I go back to network A, let's say this is by network A, I remove network B, this is terminal X, terminal Y, and I try to figure out what the voltage here is. This voltage is actually my VTH. That is the open circuit voltage from terminal X to terminal Y with network B removed. So this is going to be that. Okay. So if I had a voltmeter, and I put it here, and I measure that voltage, you know, you know, Thevenin voltage. That is my Thevenin voltage. Yeah, we call this the Thevenin voltage. And RTH, okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to constrain network A as being composed of only independent sources. No, so let's assume that network A contains only independent sources. So walang, walang uh, controlled sources dito. If network A contains only independent sources, RTH is the equivalent resistance of network A looking into terminals X and Y with all sources suppressed. So kung isusuppress ko lahat ng sources dito, and do you remember how to suppress a source? How do you suppress a voltage source? Can I hear a shout out? How do you suppress a voltage source? Shorted. Yeah, you short it. And how you how do you suppress a current source? Open. Yeah, you you take it out, no, or you leave it open, no. So if if this network contains only independent sources, walang walang dependent sources, and I suppress all the sources, kapag kinuha ko yung Equivalent resistance no? looking into terminals X and Y, you na yung magiging RTH ko. That is what it's going to be this. Okay, let's take an example. Network A has the circuit shown, determine its Thevenin equivalent with respect to terminals X and Y. So how do I get, so ito, this is just network A, no? This is just network A. Walang nakakabit dito right now. Walang nakakabit dito sa X and Y. In other words, this network A does not have any load. And all I want to do is I want to get the Thevenin equivalent 
of this particular network. So what's the first thing that I have to do? The first thing that I have to do is get the open circuit voltage across X and Y. So I want to get this voltage. And I know this will be VTH. Okay. I know that that will be VTH. Okay. Can somebody tell me maybe from inspection, what the value of VTH will be. Let's make this an exercise, no? Can somebody tell me what the value of VTH is going to be? Is it going to be 50 volts? Uh, 50 volts? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I'm, I'm afraid not, no? It's not going to be 50 volts, okay? This is this is quite a simple problem, you know. Um, what is the value of VTH? Okay, you can you can answer through the chat. No, I just want to see whether uh, whether you can get the value of VTH. No one. This is the simplest a problem can get. I know. <laughs> okay, I have one answer. No, I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's not fifty volts. No. Okay, I'll 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 give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Since this is open. Okay, since this is open, there is going to be no voltage drop across your ten k resistor. And therefore, the value of VTH is going to be the same as the value of the voltage across your 20K resistor. No, I'm sorry. It's not zero volts. No, it's not zero volts. Okay, I have one answer, 20 volts, no, which is correct. No? The answer is uh, 20 volts. Okay, so how do how did I get twenty volts? Okay, since since this is hanging, this is hanging. No, that means there is no current flowing through this. Then my thirty k and my twenty k are just in series. No, and therefore, what is this voltage going to be? No, it on v twenty k. What is the value? How how can I get v twenty k? Anyone? What what can I use? If these two are in series, voltage division. Voltage yes, division. voltage division. I know. So V20K is just going to be equal to 50 multiplied by 20K over 20K plus 30K, which will give me 20 volts. No? Okay. And since this is open, there is no voltage drop across your 10K, then VTH, VTH will now also be equal to 20 volts, no? Okay. Okay. Any question with regard to that? Any questions? Okay, let's now determine RTH. Okay, how do you determine RTH? To determine RTH, okay, we get the equivalent resistance looking into terminals XY, suppressing all the independent sources, no? Or so, yeah, suppressing all the independent sources. So, okay, I heard from one of you earlier, and it is correct that to suppress a voltage source, you replace it with a short circuit. No? So to get RTH, you suppress the 50 volt source 
And so what my circuit will look like now is this. So I have my 50 volt source that is now a short circuit. I have my 30K. I have my 20K. I have my 10K. And I'm looking at R equivalent here. This is XY. Can somebody tell me what R equivalent is going to be? Okay. What is going to be the value of R equivalent? Can somebody just uh, solve for that or can you try solving for that and then uh, post it in the chat? Okay, I hope people are trying to follow no? and not just waiting for other people to do to do it now because like i said you you need to practice the key to passing this course is to practice that's why i'm giving you the opportunity to practice okay i have a few answers yeah uh be careful of the units yeah so far okay you all got it no the ones that answered all got it it's uh 22k no this is equal to 22k Therefore, no. My Thevenin equivalent is now equal to my voltage source twenty volts. Okay, in series with a twenty-two k. No, so this is now x and y. So I'm saying this is equivalent to this. No. This is equivalent to this with respect to X and Y. No. If I connect this, if I connect a load here, I connect the same load here, that load will feel exactly the same thing. No, Or though the load will feel exactly the same way. So pag nagkapit ako ng load dito, Okay. Pag nagkapit ako ng load dito, nagkapit ako ng load dito, that load will feel exactly the same because the two are equivalent. Okay, now, is this the only way of determining the Thevenin equivalent? No. What did we learn last time? Last time we learned um, source conversion. So I just want to throw this out, ano, that you could have solved this problem using source conversion. Okay. What can we convert here? Can somebody tell me? Anong pwede natin i-convert? Yeah, just shout out, no? Um, para hindi ko na tinitignan yung chat. What can we convert? Sir, the 50 volts and the 30 kilo ohms. That's right. No, You can convert that to a current source. No, So what would be the value of the current source? What will be the value of the current source? Sino yung sumagot kanina? Um... What will be the value of the current source if I convert if I convert the 50k and the 30 uh, 50 volts and the 30k? Is it going to be 50 volts over 30k? Yeah, it's just 50 volts over 30k, no? Um uh I'm a little disappointed, I know, because apparently you probably didn't go through the uh the lesson last time, I know. Um but anyway, it's okay, no? Um so your current source is going to be, okay, you have a current source of 50 over 30K, 50 over 30K amperes, okay. 
And then that's now going to be in parallel with your 30K. Okay. So that is your voltage source that was converted to a current source. So pwede natin ngayon ipalit yan dito. So if I replace the other components, now I'm going to have a 20K here. And then I'm going to have a 10K here. And then this is going to be X and Y. Okay. Now I'm going to see these two that are in parallel. So if I see these two in parallel, I can combine the two. So again, I have here a 50 over 30K amperes. And these two in parallel, Okay, product over the sum, 600 divided by 50, that's going to be 12K. So this is going to be now 12K. Okay, and then I have my 10K. And this is X and Y. No? Remember that we are getting the equivalent with respect to terminals X and Y. And therefore, we must preserve X and Y. Hindi pwedeng mawala yung X and Y, no? Because we're trying to get the equivalent with respect to X and Y. We have to preserve X and Y. Okay, note now, I can now convert this to a voltage source. I can now convert this to a voltage source. The value of the voltage source will just be this current multiplied by 12K. So I'll have now from here, I'll have this, a voltage source. Okay, so this is going to be 50 times 12 over 30. So 50 times 12 over 30 volts. Okay. And now I'm going to have 12K. And then I'm going to have my 10K. So finally, okay, 50 times 12 over 30, okay, that's going to come out to be 20. Okay, that's going to come out to be 20. So this is going to be 20 volts. And then these two are now in series. So this is now 22K. And what do I have? This is now my Thevenin equivalent. So I could have used source conversion. Any question with regard to this? Any questions? Okay, so let's proceed. No? Anyway, yeah, you know, no? 20 volts and RTH is uh, 22K. Let's discuss Norton's theorem. So actually the same situation. We have a circuit that can be partitioned into two. And uh, the point of interconnection is X and Y. So network B is considered the load of uh, network A. Under certain conditions, and these are the same conditions under which Norton's theorem, uh, under which no, Thevenin's theorem, no, this should be Thevenin's theorem. Dapat uh, Thevenin's to, Thevenin's. Those are the same conditions under which Thevenin's theorem can be applied. In other words, this has to be a linear circuit. And then you cannot have, you cannot have any dependent sources here that are dependent on quantities that are outside. No? That are outside. All the dependent sources here have to be dependent on quantities that are also within network A. Okay. Anong sinasabi ng Norton's theorem? Network A can be replaced by a current source, I of N, in parallel with a resistance, R of N. And that is now the Norton equivalent of 
Network A. So, kanina ang Thevenin equivalent natin was a voltage source in series with a resistance RTH. Now we're saying network A can be represented by a current source in parallel with this resistance, uh, with the resistance R of n. No? Now, what is your Norton current? So this is now called your Norton current. The Norton current that is the current that flows from x to y if network B is replaced by a short circuit. So let's let's imagine this to be network A. So this is network A. I have X and Y. I replace X and Y with a short circuit. So it's a short kuto. If I short that, I expect a certain current to flow. No? That current that will flow is going to be I of N. That is now your net, your Norton current. No? On the other hand, R of N, if network A contains only independent sources, R, R of N is the equivalent resistance of network A looking into terminals X and Y with all sources suppressed. No? So, yung R of N actually pareho sa RTH. If we suppress all the sources here and we take a look at the resistance looking into terminals X and Y, yun yung magiging value nitong R of N. R of N is equal to RTH. Okay. Are there any questions? <coughs> questions? Okay. <clears throat> so, the same example. No? The same example. Um, network A has a circuit shown. Determine its Norton equivalent with respect to terminals X and Y. So, anong unang una natin gagawin? First thing we're going to do is we're going to short X and Y. And then we're going to compute for I of N. Any suggestion how we might be able to compute for I of N? Sir, get the nodal KCL at node between 30K, 20K, and 10K. Yeah, you can do that. Ano? So we can do nodal analysis here. So let's say we make this our ground. Okay, let's, let's say we call this node X. So you can do nodal analysis at node x no that's 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 so one method so okay let's let's follow that method no so nodal analysis at x okay so what is the current flowing from right to left here that's vx minus 50 over 30k okay plus vx over 20k Okay, plus Vx over 10K, that should be equal to zero. Okay, that should be equal to zero. No? And so we just have to compute for V of X. Ano magiging value ng V of X? Can somebody compute for V of X for me? I don't have the value of hand no? I, I also have to compute it myself. Uh, Anyone?
Anyone with the value of v of x? Sir, I think it might be 9.09. 9.09. Uh, let me check. No? Um, mukhang, mukhang hindi. So, sandali, no? Let me, let me just compute it, no? Uh, you're right, no? It's 9.09. Tama. V of x is 9.09. Okay. So having having now V of x, uh, actually, madami na computer now. Having V of x, how do I now compute for i of n? No? I of n is just now V of x divided by 10k. Okay. So this is going to give me 9.09 ma. So yun yung, yun yung i of n ko. Okay. Okay. Now what is RTH? No? RTH is the same as earlier, no? RT, R, sorry, R of n is equal to RTH, which is the same as earlier, which is uh, 22K. No? Therefore, what is, our, what is our Norton equivalent? No? Our Norton equivalent oh, is going to be this. No? We have 9.09 .09 MA milliampers, and then you have your 22K. And then this is now your x, and this is your y. Sir, sir. yes, hindi po ba dapat ano? Zero point nine zero nine milliamp, kasi divided by ten k po. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, point nine oh nine. No, you're right. Thank you very much. Tama. Point nine oh nine. At least uh, someone has is alert, no? That's point nine oh nine. Okay. Okay. So, ano ibig sabihin no? Ano? Nito, no? Ito. If I replace it with this, no, our equivalent, no. In other words, a load will see exactly the same thing. Now, if I connect the load here, or if I connect the load here. Okay. Um, take note that we could have also arrived at this using source conversion. No? No? If we converted this to a if we converted this to a current source, then put these two in parallel, okay, and then convert it to a voltage source, and then convert it again to a current source. Ito dapat yung lalabas. So I could also have used source conversion. Okay. On the other hand, kung alam ko na yung Thevenin equivalent, kasi alam ko na yung Thevenin equivalent from the previous problem, ano? ito. No? This is my Thevenin equivalent. My Norton equivalent is actually my Thevenin equivalent converted to a current source. In other words, uh, yeah, the Norton equivalent Is the Thevenin equivalent converted to a current source? 
So for example, kung kung mas mas gamay ninyong kunin yung Thevenin equivalent, but the problem is determine the Norton equivalent you could have uh, determined the Thevenin equivalent and converted that now to a current source to get the Norton equivalent. No? So there are many options available available to you. Are there any questions with regard to this? Any questions? Sir, I would just like to confirm that the transformation from Thevenin to Norton equivalent of the sources would be um, from Thevenin to Norton equivalent, it will be V Thevenin voltage over resist Thevenin resistance is equal to Norton current. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Thank uh, you. So if, if I get VTH, I divided by RTH, that should be equal to my isopen. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, so you know, point nine, you use no point nine oh nine or point ninety one in the twenty two k. Okay, so given now the tool, you you now know Thevenin equivalent. You also know now know uh, Norton equivalent. No, how can we use this to simplify circuit analysis? So uh, this is the general procedure. No, um, first you remove the load or you remove network B. Then you get the Thevenin or Norton equivalent of the remaining network. No? So the remaining network is presumed, presumed to be network A. Okay. And then after you've simplified now network A, you've simplified it with either the Thevenin or the Norton equivalent, you reconnect the load. Now, because, because network A is now a simpler network, it should be easier now for you to compute for whatever quantity you need to compute for. So that's the basic idea behind using Thevenin or Norton equivalent. Again, no. step one is you remove the load. Step two, you simplify network A by getting its Thevenin or Norton equivalent. Step three, you reconnect the load. And now you have a simpler overall circuit. So it's easier now for you to compute for the quantity that you need to compute for. So let's... Okay, so we'll, we'll spend time just having some examples, no, for the rest of uh, the afternoon, no. So, for example, here, no, use Thevenin theorem to determine I of x, the current through the twenty ohm resistor. So I want I want to determine the, the current through the twenty ohm resistor, and I'm instructed to use Thevenin's theorem. So, ano yung unang unang step? Okay, we consider this to be the load. So you consider okay, consider the 20 ohm resistor to be the load. Or this is your network B. So remove, remove it. Tatanggalin natin ngayon siya. So if we remove that, ang matitirang circuit natin will be, okay, I have my 27 volts. I now have one ohm here. Okay, four ohms. So I remove the load. So ito ngayon yung magiging X and Y ko. Those are my load terminals. Five ohms and then Six amperes. Okay. Okay. So now, this is now my network A. And I want to get the Thevenin equivalent of this network with respect to X and Y. So what is my Thevenin voltage? My Thevenin voltage is VXY. No? VTH. is VXY. So this is actually VTH. Okay. Now what is VXY? This is VX minus VY, right? VXY is just VX minus 
Vy. Can somebody tell me what the value of Vx is? What can we use to determine Vx? What tool can we use to determine Vx? Meron sa yung nahihiyang mag. Well, yeah, KVL, of course. KVL can always be used. No? But something more shortcut than KVL. Voltage division. Yeah, voltage division. No? If, by the way, Vx is with respect to this ground. No? I'm assuming that this is my ground. So Vx is with respect to, to this ground. So Vx is actually the voltage across my 4 ohm. Note that if this is open, if X and Y is open, then these two are in series. And therefore, Vx is just 27 multiplied by 4 divided by 4 plus 1. That's equal to Vx. So this is, uh, okay, this is 108 over 5 volts. Nine times twenty-seven, yeah. Oh, sorry, hundred, hundred three, no, hundred three over five volts. And then, then, come on, right? Hundred eight. Sorry, a oh, little bit confused today. Okay, hundred eight over five volts. Okay, what is the value of Vy? What is Vy? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what Vy is? Is it thirty volts? Uh. No. The magnitude is 30 volts. Oh, okay. It's no? what what will be the actual polarity of the voltage across the five ohms? No, your six ohms is flowing from down to up, and therefore your your negative your positive terminal is here, your negative terminal is there. Okay. And therefore the voltage here is if if Vy. If Vy is, this is positive with respect to this, Vy will be equal to minus 30 volts. Any question with regard to that? So if I get now v, Vth, okay, and you compute for it, I'm going to get now 51.6 volts. That's the value of VTH. Any question on how we got VTH? Okay. So, ito na lang, no? um, what is RTH? That one I'll ask you to do. What is RTH? So what are we supposed to do with our uh, sources? And then and these are all these are all independent sources. No, we're supposed to suppress them, right? So if I suppress my sources, what will be the value of RTH? That is the value of the resistance looking into terminal X and Y. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I held, I already have some answers. Um, unfortunately, no. <laughs> no. Try again. Try again. Uh, so I mean RTH, no? RTH 
this is X, this is Y. I have here a resistor one ohm. I have here a resistor four ohms. Here I have a short. Here I have a resistor five ohms. And here I have an open. No, it's it's uh try you know try again. Nobody has gotten the answer yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> finally. Okay. Note that these two are in these two are in parallel. So if these two are in parallel, a product over the sum, no. So the the parallel combination of these two would be four fifths, four fifths ohms, and then that now will be in series with five ohms. So four fifths is point eight plus five, you get 5.8 ohms, RTH. Five point eight ohms. So finally, what is my Thevenin equivalent? My Thevenin equivalent, uh, I have my 51.6 volts. I now have my 5.8 ohms. This is now my X and Y. So what do I do? No. I could reconnect the load. No? You reconnect load. No? What is the value of the load? The value of the load was 20 ohms. And now it's very easy for me to con to compute for I of X. It's now very easy for me to compute for I of X. What is I of X? I of X is just now equal to 51.6 volts divided by 5.8 plus 20 ohms. And this is going to give me two amperes. Any question? Any question? Okay, let's say let's say hindi natin alam yung Thevenin equivalent, and let's say we were asked to determine I of x using Norton's theorem. Using Norton's theorem. Okay, so. Using Norton's theorem, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to again remove the load, remove the load, okay. so this is 27 volts, 1 ohm. Four ohms. So gonna remember no? X and Y. Tinanggal ko yung 20 ohms. So this is five ohms now. And I have my six amperes. No? So <clears throat> I want to compute for. I of n. What did we say? How do we how do we compute for I of n? What do we have to do between x and y? I just want to hear it from you. Anong kailangan natin gawin? Yeah, no. Um, you're supposed to short x and y, no. So for me to compute for I of n, I'm supposed to short. X and Y. So the, the current that will flow here from X to Y, and I have to follow the reference direction you know, from X to Y, this will now be I of N. 
yun ang magiging i sub n ko. Okay. So how do you suggest we compute for i sub n? Any suggestions? By the way, no. Um, there are many, many ways of solving a problem. So, okay, I have source transformation. Yeah, that's that's one way. Yeah. Sige, gawin natin yon, no? So may nag may nag suggest na source transformation. So let's let's do that. So uh, um, sino nagsabi no? Si uh, sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. Yeah, is that Arl? No, Adrian. So what what will I transform? Can you tell me what I will transform? Ani ita transform ko. Anyone? So yung voltage. Okay, uh, the twenty-seven. Okay, sige, sige. I'll I'll follow your I'll follow your lead, no? So let's tra transform the twenty-seven, no? So let's say source transformation. So transform that in twenty-seven. So we make this a current source, and the value of the current source is just twenty-seven divided by one ohm, no? So this is going to be twenty-seven amperes, and then now I have my one ohm here. Okay, and then I have to preserve x and y. No? I have to preserve x and y. Okay, five ohms, and then six amperes. Okay, what will be my next step? So I'm just I'm just following what you're telling me to do. Ano magiging susunod na step kung ganyan yung uh, strategy natin? Sir, interjection lang po. Sa second um bottom right figure, di po ba dapat may 4 ohms? Or Oh, yeah. Sorry. I I I forgot na. No? There's a 4 ohms. Thank you again. 4 ohms here. Thank you. So what will be my next step? I'm just following your, I'm just following your, uh, your suggestion. Anyone? Yeah, we can combine the one ohm and four ohm. Okay, so let's do that. So you're not in yon. So twenty-seven amperes, one and and four ohm combined would give me point eight ohm. No, uh, four divided by five. So this is X, this is Y. Five ohms. Six amperes. Okay. Ano, ano pwede natin gawin ngayon? I, I need the value of this. No? I sub n. So we can, uh, no, Paul, we can um, transform bullet in 27 ampere to um, two voltage source for tapos um, by multiplying 27 to 0 0.8 ohms. Paul. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Actually, gawin na rin natin for the 6 amperes, ano? Okay. So, pag-isahan pag na lang natin yung step na yun, ano? So, let's let's convert the 27 ampere to a, to a voltage source, no? So, this is now going to be 
plus minus. So 27 times 0.8, no? Which is uh, 21.6 volts. So this is going to be 21.6 volts. And then now the 0.8 will be in series, series. And then this is now X. Okay. Tapos ito, i-convert na rin natin to a voltage source. No? So since the current is downward, your voltage source will be this way, you know? uh, minus plus. Okay. It will be minus plus. It's going to be 30 volts. And then you're going to have a 5 ohm in series. And this is now Y. No? So now it's it's quite easy to compute for I of n. Right? What is what is I of n? I of n now is going to be 21.6 minus negative 30. Okay. No? Let's say let's say we consider this to be our reference. No? So you have 21.6 minus negative 30 divided by 0 0.8 plus 5. And uh, what will you get there? You're going to get 8.9 volts now. 8.9 amperes, 8.90 amperes. Okay, so that's that's one way, no? So. Yung RTH natin will be the same. No? Ano yung RTH natin kanina? Uh, RTH is supposed to be 5.8. No? It's going to be the same. No? It's going to be the same circuit that you use for RTH. No? So RTH is going to be 5.8 ohms. So this is now going to be our Norton equivalent. No? 8.9 amperes. 5.8 ohms. Okay, just to check. No? Tignan natin yung Thevenin equivalent natin. 51.6 at saka 5.8. If I divide 51.6 by 5.8, I should get 8.9. Which is correct. No? I should get 8.9. So this is now X and Y. So finally, what do we do? We put back the load, which is your 20 ohms. Remember, I, I need to compute for this, no? I of X. So how do I compute for I of X? Any suggestions? What can we use to compute for I of X? Yeah, we can use current division, no? Tama si uh, B and Rossell, no? We can use current division. So what's what's my formula now? It's going to be 8.9 multiplied by 5.8 divided by 5.8 plus 20. And if you do that, you should get exactly the same answer as we got earlier. We should get two amperes. Any questions? I have a question. Could I have used nodal analysis here? Could I have used nodal analysis? Yes, no, you could, you could. The, the thing about nodal analysis is, okay, this is one node. Okay, So it's going to allow you to get the voltage at this node. No? Now, after getting the voltage at this node, you will be able to get 
the current flowing through this resistor and the current flowing through this resistor because huh? alam mo yung kung alam mo yung uh, voltage at this node for example if you know the voltage at this node you can compute for the current flowing through this resistor you can compute for the current flowing through this resistor no and if you know those two currents using kcl you should now be able to compute for i sub n did you understand that okay so if if i had used nodal analysis no? i would apply i would apply nodal analysis to this node no so this is a nodal analysis here what would be my what would be my equation let's let's call this node um let's call this node j no let's call that big node node j okay so what what is your nodal equation your vj minus 27 over 1 okay plus vj over 4 plus vj over 5 okay uh, minus 6 a uh, plus 6 is equal to 0 kita nyo yan if you if you see that please give me a thumbs up that that, that you can see that no Okay, so I can compute for VZ. No, I can compute for VZ. Kung alam ko yung VZ, if I know the voltage at this node, then I can compute for this current. And I can also compute for this current. No? Because if I know the voltage here, no, then this current is just 27 minus VZ over 1, right? And then this current is Vj over 4. So if I know these two currents, I apply KCL at this node, I can solve now for I sub n. No? Because uh, I sub n plus this current will give me this current. So you could also have used nodal analysis. Any question? Any question? So, anong, gust, anong mas gusto nyo? Tevinin or Norton? Alin ang, what do you prefer? Actually, you should not have a preference, no? Because sometimes it's, sometimes it's more convenient to use Tevinin. Sometimes it's more convenient to use Norton. So, you should be adept at either. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see. So some person said, mas madali daw yung nodal analysis. Actually, yeah, because in totoo say nodal analysis, you only have to solve this one equation, one unknown, and then madali mo na makukuha yung, yung mga currents na gusto mo. No? So really, it's, it's really all up to you how you want to solve the problem. Okay. Um, determining RTH, no? So yung method na ginamit natin to determine RTH requires that network A, okay, the network that we have been talking about, consists of only independent sources. Yung method na yan, hindi pwedeng gamitin kung yung network A contains both independent and or dependent sources. Hindi pwedeng gamitin yung method na yun for determining our arts of H. I'll, I'll, I'll call that method one. Method one is if your circuit contains only independent sources, suppress the independent sources, then get the equivalent circuit. That's method one. You cannot use that if, if network A contains dependent sources. So what are we going to do to determine RTH kapag may mga dependent sources? Yun ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon next week. Okay. So that's all I have for uh, today. No? So are there any questions? Are there any questions with this topic or with any other topic uh, related to triple E123? Any questions? Sir, I want to confirm po for if we're being asked to solve using Tevinin, Tevinin equivalent, we 
short the circuit was it no we no, open yeah Thevenin equivalent to get the Thevenin voltage you have to take out the load okay and then get and then get the open circuit voltage across the load terminals. Okay. Po. And Norton, then Norton is you take out the load, replace it with a short, no? Yes, po. And then get the short circuit current. Okay. Po. So para po di treat namin yung Thevenin as a voltage and the Norton as a current. Um, uh, what do you mean by that? I, I'm I'm not sure I in terms of gagawin po sa circuit, kasi po ba if we want for the voltage source to vanish, we we open the circuit. Um, I I don't think you can think of it as the vo voltage source vanishing. No. <laughs> uh, Hindi po okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I don't think you can think of it that way. Okay. Uh, okay. So basically, basta po kapag Seven in equivalent, I open yung load, and then kapag Norton current, I is short, short for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank you. Po. <laughs> okay. So, any any other questions? Okay, if there are none, um, I will stay. Uh, I'll stay till the last person leaves. No, let me stop the recording now. I'll stay till the last person.